Scientists now know that the asteroid smashed into the sea of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, where, in a unique twist of fate, a deadly chain reaction was waiting to be unleashed. Something I'm hoping to showcase with two explosive experiments. So this tank represents the deep ocean, obviously scaled down many, many times. Up here is going to be our projectile firing down our asteroid into the deep sea, and this should show us what would have happened when a giant asteroid impacted on the largest environment on the planet. Once detonated, our mini asteroid will fire so fast that we've set up two slow motion cameras to capture the action as it impacts our sea. This is Deep Ocean Asteroid Experiment, Volume 1. Everybody ready? Three, two, one. Whoa! Whoa, did you feel that? <laughs> Every single airspace in my body just reverberated with the boom. That's unbelievable. In real time, it was just a big bang, but slow down. Oh, whoa. You can actually see the pressure wave coming out through the air. I have never seen that before. You can see water just expanding, bowing outwards, and it is a phenomenal amount of energy. But the water has absorbed the power from the asteroid. And that's exactly what would have happened if it had hit the deep sea. So you've got lots of water vapour going up into the air. There would have been a tsunami that would have wiped out everything at the coast. But crucially, things that were living inland and things that were a long way away from the impact would have survived. If this had happened in the middle of the deep sea, it wouldn't have brought about the end of the dinosaurs. It turns out that the asteroid smashed not into the deep ocean, but the shallow sea where the seabed itself held a lethal secret. A crucial part to this dinosaur tragedy. So in this last experiment, we're gonna try and show the same situation as actually happened in the Yucatan Peninsula. So there, the sea was tens, possibly hundreds of meters deep rather than thousands. And this tank should represent that. So what we've got, is just a few centimeters of water or sea. And then this, which is the seabed, and then the Earth's crust. With our second mini asteroid locked and loaded, it's almost time to find out what happened that day 66 million years ago. So now, this is the calm before the storm. Just imagine that this is the late Cretaceous. In the jungles, the swamps, the deserts, life is continuing as it has done for tens of millions of years. And then, in the sky, a tiny faint spot, almost like a star appears, and then within seconds, everything changes and the world will never be the same again. Okay, final test. Asteroid into shallow sea. Three, two, one. Oh! Whoa! Let's examine the destruction. It's come in, hit the seabed, because there's not enough sea here to dissipate all of that energy and force, and it's gone straight down into the bedrock. This collision with the seabed is what made the event fatal for the dinosaurs. But to understand why, I need to watch it in slow-mo. So the water's vaporized, but there's also enormous amounts of what's called blast debris or ejecta clouds of dust that are being thrown up into the atmosphere. And the dust was the final link in this deadly event because it was made up of trillions of tons of suffocating sulfur. Once in the atmosphere, this unique dust was so thick, it blotted out the sun. In just two weeks, a cloak of darkness and freezing temperatures were brought across the earth, a desolate winter that lasted for years. That's when it becomes catastrophic, when simply nothing could survive. The plants starved of sunlight would have died. 
The largest animals ran out of food remarkably quickly. The creatures that scavenged them, eventually, they had nothing to feed on either. 70% of species on the planet simply went extinct. 